Hey there, this is Dave Humpes from hpyloricesymptoms.com and I'm with you again this time to talk about H. pylori testing. Now there are four main tests that are used by doctors to help diagnose H. pylori. First of all, we have the blood test. Second, we have a breath test. Third, we have an endoscopy. And fourth, we have a stool test. So there are four main tests that doctors will use. Now, which test you receive at your doctor is going to depend on what that local uh, medical authority deems to be the appropriate test. And some doctors, believe it or not, are not aware that different tests are available for H. pylori. And what I want to do in this short video is just look at the pros and cons of each of the tests so that you can try and locate the test that you feel is best for you. And I'd like to add on at the end a little bit of a, uh, a golden nugget, if you like, in terms of the kinds of tests that we prefer to use in our clinical practice to help people figure out a lot more in terms of what's going on in their digestive system over and above just H. pylori. Now, the H. pylori blood test does not look for H. pylori itself. People often write in and say, they found H. pylori in my blood. No, they didn't. What they do when they look at the blood is they look for your immune system's response to having H. pylori. So if you come back positive for H. pylori, you may or may not have an active infection. It's not guaranteed that that positive result tells you that the infection is active. And the blood test is also not good for retesting to check that H. pylori is gone. Why? Because your immune response can remain elevated to H. pylori many months or even two or three years after the H. pylori has gone. So actually the blood test, unless it's the only test available to you in your area, in my opinion, is the weakest of all the tests. The second test is a breath test. You need to go to the doctor and you basically breathe into a bag and they analyze the gas. And it's the gas analysis that tells you whether you may have H. pylori. Again, the drawback of this test is that it's not directly finding H. pylori. It's looking for evidence that H. pylori may be there. And the breath test in the medical literature is well known for its weakness in diagnosing children and smaller adults. So the breath test is okay. It is pretty accurate, but it loses its accuracy to a degree in the sense that uh, it's not particularly great for kids. The third test is the endoscopy, and this is an invasive test. With the endoscopy, you have to go to a clinic and you've got to lie down on your side and they put a camera down your throat, attached to a tube, all the way down into your stomach. They have a couple of, uh, a little bit of a, a sort of a scissors or tweezers at the end of, of the uh, scope. And what they do is they take a snip of tissue if they see any red or inflamed tissue in the stomach or the upper part of the small intestine. Then they take that tissue away and they analyze it to see if they can find H. pylori. If they find H. pylori, that's great. If not, then of course you are told that you don't have it. The problem with that test is it's kind of like finding a needle in a haystack in many ways because H. pylori can hang around in areas that are not necessarily red and inflamed. And so if the couple of snips of tissue are taken from areas where H. pylori is not present, you'll be told you're negative for H. pylori, even though it's there. Plus, of course, it's quite invasive to have that contraption uh, pushed down your throat. The fourth test for H. pylori is a stool antigen test. That's where they're actually looking for fragments of the actual H. pylori uh, organisms in the stool sample that you provide. And that's deemed to be pretty accurate because you can have some false negatives, but you cannot have false positives. With the blood test and with the breath test, you're actually open to having false positive results where they say you actually have the infection when in actual fact you do not have it. Now, we've been using stool testing for seven or eight years, and it was actually a stool antigen test that I ran with a private lab that helped me find my own H. pylori infection. Now, I promised you a golden nugget in terms of the testing that we tend to use when we're helping our clients and patients figure out why they're not feeling well. We use a private laboratory test that not only checks for H. pylori, but actually analyzes 
your stool sample for a multitude of other potential reasons why you have your symptoms. So it looks for candida and other yeast and fungal organisms. It looks for parasites. It looks for lots and lots of other bad bacteria like Clostridium difficile and E. coli and Campylobacter and Citrobacter and all these fancy names. It also checks your immune function. It checks whether you have gluten sensitivity. It looks for inflammation markers in the stool as well. And to be honest, the number one drawback with H. pylori testing is that it only looks for H. pylori. H. pylori is only one of many reasons why you might have digestive symptoms. And so if you just look for H. pylori, you may be missing a trick. You may actually have other reasons for feeling unwell. And even if your test for H. pylori comes back positive, it may not be the only reason you're not feeling well. So I really, really recommend that you consider running a very comprehensive stool test with a private laboratory so that you can actually figure out once and for all exactly what is going on in your digestive system. It's going to save you heaps of time. It's going to save you a lot of money in the long run, and you're going to get much better results with your health in a shorter space of time. If you'd like some help with choosing the right test, please feel free to visit my website. There are lots of details there about how we can help you access that kind of testing. The website is hpylorisymptoms.com and I hope to see you there soon. My name is Dave Pompez. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope it's added value and I'll catch you later. Thank you.